What's up, dude? Day 39. Dead of daily. Do the thing and you shall have the power. Ralph Waldo Emerson, Essay on Compensation. Let me tell you what actually happened starting the day after the night of despair. After my solar energy collapsed, my solar energy company collapsed, and they towed away my nice car. I had no resources, no savings or capital, nothing I could start over with. The only option that I had was to go work for someone else. So I did something that gorgeous George cutting those golf greens in his cutoffs would have never dreamed he'd be doing. I went into sales. You have to understand, I hate sales. When I was starting out, that was the last thing I wanted to do. When I first went to work for Texas Instruments, my intention was to work my way up into management. They had other ideas. Quote, if you want to be in management, end quote, they told me, you have to start in sales. I was horrified. I knew absolutely nothing about sales, and the idea terrified me. I had no natural gift for it. I didn't have the patience. I am no natural-born, silver-tongued, smooth talker. But sales they wanted, so sales they got. And over time, I got used to it. And then something ironic happened. Over time, sales changed my life. Not the process of sales itself. It was the training involved. In the course of going through all kinds of courses, workshops, sales-related training material, I was exposed to a huge amount of valuable information. But it wasn't even the information itself that changed my life. Ironically, it was the thing that I eventually realized was missing in all of that training and information. The thing that was far more valuable, even than that of all the priceless information. It was what I call the first ingredient. After that night of despair, having no resources of my own, I went to work for a direct marketing company. In time, I built up a good sized sales force and then went on to build a couple of other successful businesses, one of which eventually appointed me CEO. Based on that experience, I then started a personal development training company called the People's Network, or TPN. At TPN, we produced nearly a thousand television programs on all sorts of topics, from finance to relationships, and the company had to work with some of the greatest authors, thinkers, and thought leaders of our time. Because of the position I was in, I found myself at the epicenter of the self-development movement. Spending time with such legendary figures as John Miller, the famous literary agent for personal development, Dick Snyder, then CEO of Simon & Schuster, the big personal development publisher Jimmy Bowen, the music producer, and Oprah Winfrey. During those years, we produced and provided some of the best information on how to become successful available anywhere. And thousands of people use that information to improve their lives a little or even a lot. But for many others, so many others, that golden, priceless, incredible, insightful information seemed to have hardly any effect or no effect at all. It was mystifying. I had learned so much and gained so much from this stuff. These teachings were life-altering. Yet I was seeing all these people eagerly taking it all in and not really getting much benefit from it. In the course of that experience, I came to the sobering realization. Everything these great teachers were talking about worked, but it wasn't working. People would try to follow it, but then the quantum leap they were looking for didn't happen in the first 30, 60, or 90 days and then they'd quit. No matter how much information there is, and no matter how good that information is, if the person consuming it doesn't have the right catalyst, the catalyst that will allow them to apply 
the information effectively, then success will still elude their grasp. It's like changing, it's like eating the best food in the world without the intestinal capacity to digest or absorb it. It may be fantastic, incredibly accurate information with amazing insights and a track record of proven success, but it just goes right through you, leaving you as weak and as hungry as you were before you ate it. I saw it happen hundreds, thousands of times. It wasn't for lack of trying, and it wasn't for a want of desire. If you've ever been told, quote, You'll get it if you just want it bad enough, end quote. I'm here to let you off the hook. It simply isn't true. Just wanting something doesn't necessarily get it for you. Not even when you combine wanting with trying really hard and working really hard. You can want all you want and try yourself blue in the face, but it still won't happen. Not without the first ingredient. Over the past few decades, I've worked with thousands of people from every imaginable background and walk of life, from doctors and lawyers to bus drivers and manual laborers. They have all had the exact same opportunity. Some of these people have become millionaires and many more have gone on to earn a good, solid living. But the majority of them faced with exactly the same opportunities have gone nowhere. Why? It's not a matter of luck. It's not timing or fate. It's not a matter of intelligence, skill, or talent either. During these same years, I've gone to the very top with a range of different companies and different product lines, which I knew next to nothing about when I started, and in different countries and different languages, which I didn't speak, and I still don't. And you already know it wasn't my natural gift for sales which I still don't have. The truth is, there's been nothing brilliant about anything I've done. Quite the opposite, in fact. In every case, I've done the exact same thing every time. Using ridiculously simple strategies made up of ridiculously simple lists of ridiculously simple actions. The strategies I used, none of them invented or devised by me, by the way, are so simple that if you and I sat down together in a room for 20 minutes, I could show you exactly what I did to create four different, separate, multi-million dollar organizations and teach you how to do the exact same thing in 20 minutes. And chances are, it wouldn't work for you. Why not? Because how to do it is not the issue. Because if we don't fundamentally change the way you think, then you'll have rearranged what I said by the time you leave the room. You'll have reinvented it by the time you go to bed at night. And in the morning, you won't even recognize it is the same information. It's the same reason diets don't work. The same reason gym memberships don't magically make you more fit. Because a diet without the slight edge, a gym membership without the slight edge, a solid and intelligently designed business plan without the slight edge is like a plan, is like a plant without water. People everywhere are clamoring for the formula, the secret, the path to improve their lives. And as I found during my years with TPN, There's more good, solid, how-to information available today about all those things than there's ever been before. But that's not how it works. If you're one of the millions looking for cookie-cutter answers to the great questions in life, you can call off the search right now. How to do it is not the issue. If how to do it were the answer, it'd be done. It's how you do the hows 
that's important. If access to the right information were the answer, we'd all be rich, healthy, happy, and fulfilled. And most of all, and most of us are none of those things. Why not? Because the answer is only the answer. It isn't actually doing the thing. It isn't applying the answer, living the answer. It's only information. It's not the how-to books are not, it's not that how-to books are not valuable. They are. In fact, there are some wonderful ones that I'll recommend to you at the end of this book. It's just that another how-to book is not what you need. It's not what any of us need. We already have enough of those, maybe more than enough. Because what you need to transform your life is not more information. Besides, we're all so different, and my how-to may work for me, but may not be the how-to that works for you. As much as we'd love to quantify a precise, specific, paint-by-the-numbers approach to life, love and happiness, we are all out of luck in that department. Because there is no universal, one-size-fits-all method to anything. However, there is a secret ingredient. An ingredient that once you grasp it, will cause you to find those answers, apply them, live them, and achieve those results you want. A secret ingredient that will allow you to achieve lasting success in any area of your life that you choose. Time to pull away the curtain and share the secret. Ready? Here it comes. This is it. The secret ingredient is your philosophy. Now, before you react, I'm not talking about some esoteric intellectual thing here, not some complex, elaborate, or heady system of ideas. No long list of bullet points you have to remember with clever acronyms that you have to memorize. And I'm definitely not talking about some kind of self-hypnosis or about conjuring up the impossible out of thin air through some mystical power of attraction or any other kind of hocus pocus. And most, and most important of all, what I'm talking about is not hard to do. By your philosophy, quote unquote, all I mean is changing the way you think about simple everyday things. Once you do, then you'll take the steps you need to take to lead you to the how-tos that you need. Let me put it this way. If you don't change how you think about these simple everyday things, then no amount of how-tos will get you anywhere or give you any true solutions. Because it's not the hows that do it, it's how you do the hows. The reason diets and self-help courses and weight loss programs and other how-tos don't work for most people is the same reason how-to books and courses don't work for most people. It isn't that the actions are wrong. It's that people don't keep doing them. By focusing on the actions the what-to-dos and how-to-do-its is not enough because it's the attitude behind the actions that keeping those actions in place. Aha, so all I need is an attitude adjustment. Unfortunately, no. It's not that simple. Here's the problem. You can adjust your attitude by getting inspired, by listening to a great speaker, by reading an inspiring story, or by your best friend giving you a pep talk, by giving yourself a pep talk. Any of those things can get you moving in the right direction. So far, so good. The problem is it won't last. 
Remember the roller coaster diagram? You get inspired by the uplifting story or insp- inspirational pep talk, but you can't freeze that feeling or glue the emotions of the moment into place. Emotions change like the wind, and you can't stop them. No one can. They keep moving. That's why they're called emotions and not E standing stills. You can't dictate how you feel, no matter how much you may tell yourself to feel positive about this how to step or that how to step. What if you just don't? Today you're excited about getting fit. You feel like doing your 20 minutes on the treadmill. Great. But what if tomorrow you just don't feel like doing it? To find the path to success, you have to back up one more step. It's the understanding behind the attitudes that are behind the actions. It's the philosophy. That's the missing ingredient. The secret ingredient. The first ingredient. Yes, you have to know the winning how-to actions and you have to possess the winning attitudes. But what generates all that and keeps it all in place is your philosophy. Your philosophy is what you know, how you hold it, and how it affects what you do. How you think about simple, everyday things. That's what this book is about. Your philosophy creates your attitude, your actions, and your results. So that is a couple of pages from The Slight Edge by Jeff Olson. I'm uh, in the middle. This is one of the current books that I'm reading right now. Man, it's great. It's a really good book. It just really it uh, validates a lot of what I've talked about um, on my channel. It do- validates a lot of what I've talked about in my emails. This I- This idea, this concept that Your thoughts equal your results. I've talked about this numerous times. Um, I'll drop a couple of uh, blog posts where I wrote up these probably about a a year or two years ago. Um, And I'm just now, I've had this book on my list of reading to do's um, for a while. I'm just now getting to it. But your philosophy is your thoughts, right? And it's your thoughts which lead to your actions and your results, right? And so I'll actually take it back one more step back to thoughts. It's like, are you having the right thoughts? Right? And that's what I talk about in the action attraction method um, post that I wrote up, I don't know, maybe a year, two years ago. I'll drop it inside of the uh, inside of the description area so you can check it out. But essentially, you got to back it up a couple more steps. Like, okay, what is leading to our thoughts, right? So there's two posts that I wrote about. One is your greatest gift to the world, which is getting clear on your wound, right? I, this is a concept I learned from, uh, from Robert Bly in his book, uh, Iron John. It talks about this concept of the wound, and then based on that wound, that i.e. that life experience, based on that, we begin to tell ourselves a story about that experience. And then that essentially starts to shape our thoughts, right? Our worldview, how we look at the world. And then based on those thoughts, we begin to establish a value system. And then based on those values, we begin to, uh, based on those values, we begin to take actions or not taking actions, right? This is where we can fall into you've heard me talk about over and over an indecisive life and living a life of um, avoidance, right? We create this internal resistance, internal struggle. So I've got a few blog posts that I've, I wrote up this, you know, if you want to kind of check that stuff out, I'll put it um, in the description area. But the reason why I share that with you today and the reason why I kind of read, you know, these few pages here, from the slide edge is because that's how I felt in today's training session. Um, dude, I came into this training session just feeling like crap. So today's a technical day, right? So I'm working on my, my kettlebell snatch 
And uh, I'm really working on my the crawl, right? Like I mentioned, um, I feel like my inner groin muscles need a little more work. I do a lot of abduction training, which is in that wide sumo stance, right? And I don't pay enough attention to the adduction, right? Getting my knees closer together. And so that's where the, like the crawling and the, the, the six point and the four point crawl kind of comes in. And how he talks about it's these tiny little things. It's these tiny little things that you do every single day that in the long run have the greatest impact, right? So me deadlifting every single day, like if I would have just deadlifted, you know, once or twice out of the week or what have you just for, you know, four weeks or six weeks or eight weeks, like that doesn't have an impact long term on my deadlift. But me working on these little skills every single day, these little setups, this little this little progression chain um, ladders that I've been working on. I talked about um, I talked about skill skill sequencing, um, which is something I've been working on, like pairing together specific little skills like the wedge, the wedge to the knee with, you know, the deadlift pause. And then from there, you know, that tactical rack pull, lockout, full deadlift, like kind of working on these skill sets. And um, it's those little things that are going to have a huge impact long term, right? So I came in today's training session, like not feeling it, you know, I, um, I, I want to say if I'm, if I'm, I'm looking through my notes, my, my training log here, I want to say I did jujitsu again after barbells after uh, jujitsu. I can't recall though, but I want to say that I did. But even in jujitsu, I just had a crap session. Like I got my ass kicked. Like I felt very floppy. Like I felt like uncoordinated on the mat. I don't know what it was. I mean, it was just an off day. But then I took that same mindset into my deadlift session. And I already had this mindset of like, man, today's not going to be good. Today's going to be a tough session. You know, I just had this mindset of fatigue. And I tell you what, I self-manifested that, right? Because the session actually was tough. Um, I could barely break the ground with the wedge at 4.05. Um, like I mentioned, jiu-jitsu was also crap, and uh, it's all just based on my thoughts, right? Your thoughts lead to your results, your philosophy, right? And so if we're trying different training programs, and you're like, man, this, you know, like, like, like he said in the book, there's no end to the amount of information that's at our fingertips, Right, you can get. I mean, I've got an ebook, kettlebell workout snacks, which is, from what I hear, a great resource. <laughs> so many guys tell me, dude, you should be charging for this thing. Um, but I don't, you know, because I just want to, um, I just, I just want to give back to you guys, right? As a, as a thank you for watching this and consuming my information, right? I've got training programs, I got coaching programs, you know, that, uh, you know, I know that if I can provide that value up front for you first, so that way you can experience like my work, like my ultimate goal is like, okay, I, pro- I show up for one, no intention of anything in return. I'm just going to provide value, give you guys these, these, these programs to, you know, help you to get stronger, become the better, biggest, be, biggest, the best and strongest version of yourself. And I want them to be so good that you're like, dude, I want that reaction of, dude, this should be like, you should charge for this because if the free stuff is good, bro, I'm telling you, my paid stuff's even better. It's even better. It's not even close. Doesn't even scratch the surface of how deep we go with the guys like in the Better Man Blueprint. Um, we go really deep with the programming, uh, the training, the skill set. We go into all that. But um, anywho, showing up with value first, right? And so I kind of got went off on a tangent there and I actually forgot what I was freaking talking about. Um, yeah, like I, I couldn't set up right. Like just the wedge wasn't there. I couldn't break the ground as you can see. Like I'm pulling the bar cold off the floor like I'm not even getting it to break to where I can just you know speed pull it from there um, 
man, what was I talking about? I lost my train of thought there. See, that's why you don't go on tangents, right? This is why you should have like a lot of notes in front of you <laughs> to uh, uh, when you're going to some of these talks. Um, I lost my train of thought. Just focus on doing these tiny little things every day, man. Okay. Um, oh, I knew what I was talking about. I knew where I was going now. There's no endless information that's out there, right? You can get kettlebell workouts. I mean, my whole entire channel has, I've got this whole quick kettlebell workout series, which I'll drop, um, in the corner. Um, I've got this whole quick kettlebell workout series. Like I provide, I, I don't know, probably some of the, you know, the majority of a lot of the kettlebell workouts type stuff. I provide a lot of that stuff out there. I've got my free ebook, kettlebell workout snacks. Like there's no endless amount of information that's out there, right? And yet I still, I talk to guys who are considering working with me, right? Who are, who are reaching out, they need help. And yet they've got my, they've had my ebook, uh, and some of my programs, and yet they haven't done any of them. And then whether they, they, they decide to get started and work with me and, and we partner up and we, and we do the thing, or they're like, well, you know what, I'm just going to, I'm just going to work on what I already have. Like I have the kettlebell workouts, like, no, I have the kettlebell workout snacks and I have one of these other programs of yours. Well, here's the truth, dude, you've had those things for a year and you haven't done it. So it's not like, like he says in the book, it's not the how to's you've got all the information there, you know, and some people, Hey, I'll tell you what, there are several guys that watch this channel, guys that are on my email list that they'll probably never, ever need to coach with me because they have a different philosophy. They're like, dude, if you give me the how to's, I, I have a mindset that I'm going to do the work and I have the specific outlook on life. Like my philosophy is, is tight, is, is dialed in. And so I have several guys that man, they're just good with buying my products and they're just good with kettlebell workout snacks. And hey, you know what? That's awesome. But that's a very small percentage of my audience. Most of my guys, they actually need the support. They need that coaching. Um, and and quite and quite honestly, I believe we all need coaching. We all need coaching. Like even if you're going to do something like that on your own, I definitely encourage you to have a coach um, that you can that you can hold yourself accountable to. I have a coach. I hired me a nutrition coach to help me get my get my shit together. <laughs> like I coach the stuff, but I need someone to help me because it's it's too easy to tweak your own program, right, for yourself. And so there's all this information that's out there. Two guys can have the same program kettlebell workout snacks one guy goes off and goes off and crushes it changes his entire life i've had guys that have changed their entire lives just by following kettlebell workout snacks losing 20 30 50 pounds just doing kettlebell workout snacks and these if you're not familiar with that um i'll i'll make it available so you can grab a copy here at the end but um the programs in kettlebell workout snacks are Man, they're 15 minute sessions at a, at max, right? They're just 10 to 15 minute sessions, and you're only doing them three times a week, so 45 minutes or less. And we have guys changing their life in 45 minutes a week, right? So if you go to the the uh, the the web page where you can get the kettlebell workout snacks, like it's not that is not a, a sensational headline that says how to do this in 45 minutes a week. I have guys changing their lives in 20 in uh uh in 45 minutes a week you know and then you have some guys that just won't do the work and so you have two guys with two different sets of philosophies right and i mentioned the whole action attraction method right where we have you know you've got your wound or your life experience and then based on that you tell yourself a story and then from there you begin to have specific thoughts and a worldview and a belief system and then that belief system you start to uh uh cultivate specific values right? Like, like core values. And then it all just, it all leads to that either taking action or internal resistance, right? And the thing to take away here is you can have two, two guys, as I mentioned, you have one guy that takes kettlebell workout snacks, crushes it. And you have another guy that just doesn't. And he goes on to the next shiny thing, always looking for the free thing when he's never actually, t he, and, and I think most guys uh, want the free thing 
or they want to buy the cheap the cheapest thing because they really have no intention of actually doing the work, right? They have no intention of actually doing the work and they want to be able to check that box, check that ego box and be like, "Well, you know what? At least I tried and did something." Right? You've got two different sides of this, two different sides of the coin here. And so you'll have two guys, two different life experiences and yet they'll tell themselves two different stories. You'll have one guy that takes the depressed path, the woe is me, my life, you know, the world is against me, uh, you know, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And then you have the other guy that rises above the wound, rises above the experience, and he uh, doesn't make excuses. He uses that as fuel to become better, to become a better man, right? Actually, he goes above the wound. He becomes what, what Robert Bly calls a grandiose ascender. So he actually has no connection to the wound. He flies above it. He decides, you know, I'm going to build a career. I'm going to make money. I'm going to get good grades. I don't have anything to do with it. But the key thing that you want, you want that secret third path. And that is taking hold of the wound, taking hold of that life experience and learning from it and using that because ultimately that is your gift to the world. Your wound, your life experience is ultimately your gift to the world. And I will drop, uh, like I said, I'm going to drop a couple of links in the description area around these posts that I put up on the blog. You can check those out if you want to. But that's the key, man, is the key is that third secret path to take hold of your wound, take hold of your experience in life, whatever that is that led to your story, your thoughts, your belief system. Use it as fuel. Use it as a learning uh, there's a learning experience, right? And if you do these two things in life, you will be successful, right? I'm going to give you these two things. If you do these two things, you will be successful. Number one, learn from your mistakes, learn from your wound, learn from your life experience, right? Learn from it. And then two, never quit. Never quit and continue to do the little things every single day, as mundane as they may seem as little as they may seem, even though you may not be seeing the results. I'm going to touch on this again. I'm going to touch on something else here uh, in an upcoming video. When you're not, quote unquote, seeing the results, you can't rely on what you see all the time. But if you rely on what you, you can see, you're going to miss the boat. All right. You have to rely on what you know. And I'm going to expand on that in another episode. All right. So that's it, man. Technical day. I went into it with the wrong mindset. And ultimately, our thoughts lead to our results. Our thoughts lead to our results, and that is the missing ingredient. Your philosophy, your worldview, your outlook. But it all starts with that wound. That wound leads to your story, your belief system, and either taking action, the action attraction method, or internal resistance. So appreciate you watching, man. This episode's been long enough. Talk to you tomorrow. Peace.